might mean for us and for the region, let's bring in Jonathan Pryke. He's Director of the Pacific Islands Program at the Lowy Institute. So we've got a leaked report of what this deal could be. What do we know so far about what it, it does entail and I suppose what it could entail? Are we looking, you know, a few steps down the track when we're talking about Chinese warships? Yeah, look, uh, the draft here is, in, in the language that has been presented in this leak, is very expansive in what it would... in what the foundations it would lay for future Chinese engagement in, uh, in Solomon Islands. It really reads to me as a wish list from China, as a draft that really hasn't been earnestly negotiated by the Solomon Islands government. This is one of the unknowns about this leak, is we don't know if it's draft one or if it's draft 40 or if it's somewhere in between, but it really does read mm. to me like a wish list from China. So it does lay these foundations uh, for all this kind of future engagement we've just been discussing. Uh, but it is just the first step, you know. It, it's got a long way to go before it gets signed by both parties, before it gets tabled in the right. floor of Solomon Islands Parliament. Then even if it does get through, the Solomon Islands government still does reserve the rights to an every individual occasion of China asking for some sort of engagement, some sort of presence, some sort of uh, investment in the country. They can veto it at any step. So I feel like, I imagine from the Solomon Islands perspective today, they're a bit shocked by the um, attention that this leak has gotten because I think from their perspective it just had so much further to go before it became, uh, you know, became enshrined in law. In politics, we're always looking at who did the leak, trying to guess that, but why the leak came out. Can we guess at motives here and assume someone within the, the realms of power in the Solomon Islands actually doesn't want this to go ahead? Or on the flip side, you get this out there and suddenly Australia becomes a lot more generous. Uh, look, you, you could see motives in both there, but, I mean, there, there is a, a lot of domestic drivers to these issues as well. There was, a, in 2019, Solomon Islands swapped its diplomatic allegiance from Taiwan to China. That uh, frustrated a lot of people, particularly on the island of, of Malaita, uh, the second largest, most populous island in Solomon Islands. The original leak actually came from a Malaitan official who no doubt got it from a friend within the Ministry of, of Foreign Affairs. We don't know the exact source of it. Um, I'm sure mm. it was strategically timed. Parliament in Solomon Islands is due, due to resume sitting next week, and I'm sure it's going to be a fiery parliamentary sitting. Uh, the Prime Minister of uh, Solomon Islands, Manasseh Sogavare, Sogavare, was supposed to give a press conference today to address these issues, which has since been cancelled, and so it's all lined up for a very interesting start of a parliamentary sitting week just next week. If Australia doesn't want this to go ahead, what's within our power? I mean, part of it, as you mentioned, we don't know how far along the drafting process they are at, but is it just us coming to the party more, playing a, a more of a partnership with the region and the Solomon Islands? Well, I think Prime Minister Morrison's correct in his judgment that we shouldn't be jumping, uh, reacting too quickly to this. We shouldn't be jumping at shadows. We should be working our relationships uh, behind closed doors to see how far along this has gone, and to work with Solomon Islands to try and help get them on the, out of the other side of this geopolitical storm they've surprisingly found themselves in. Uh, you know, it's, it's not a matter of throwing the kitchen sink and more, throwing more money at this problem. It's a matter of, of treating it uh, with reason and deliberation and, and also just making sure that what we are providing to, to Solomon Islands uh, yeah. in, ensure, ensure that we are the, remaining the, the provider of choice for security uh, concerns and you know clearly there are people within the Solomon Islands government that are looking elsewhere for uh, addressing security issues in that country and so right. we and do need to be alert to we, we might need to do more in the future. So this gets to Scott Morrison saying look in terms of the direct aid we're providing it's 1.7 billion it's up from 1.2 nobody competes. A couple of things on that though first of all if that were enough and we were seen as that generous we probably wouldn't be seeing this potential deal with China. And I suppose the other aspect is it's not just the direct money, it's all the other things that come with Chinese connections, right? Like um, loans, um, bits on the side, shady deals and so on. And that amount of money dwarfs Australia's involvement. Look, yeah, I, I don't think Australia should think we, sh we can have a strategic monopoly over the Pacific Islands region. Uh, China has emerged as a significant player through infrastructure, private investment, aid, lending. Uh, and so we have to accept that there is going to be this heightened degree of geopolitical tension with China and that there will be some concessions made in China's direction. Now, we, we're going to have to be more smart about what are the red lines for Australia, and this certainly seems to be one, and how we can better compete with, 
with China on our turf, on on our on you know the the stronger ties that we have with the Pacific. You know, we have history, culture, religion, mm. uh, you know, sport. There's language. There's all sorts of um, people to people links. There's all sorts of ties that bond us to this region far more tightly mm. than China ever will. And so it's just about playing the game smarter and not playing the game on China's turf and just making it a money war. It's a bombshell leak today. Thank you for your analysis of it. Thank you.